Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, today, I'm gonna do a short lesson on understanding how to play the changes. Uh, and what I mean by changes is, is not bebop, we're not gonna do a bebop thing today, we're gonna just strictly talk about playing over 12 bar blues in the key of A, using the uh, Sir and standard tuning, going through the two rock, signal chain is Sir, Gladio SC into the two rock, Gladio is there just for some cushy, marshmallowy, cloudy, goodness, juiciness. <laughs> um, so I want to make this short. I don't want to make this too long. It's going to be a little music theory based because it kind of has to be. Um, don't be scared by that. Theory is not scary at all. It's just ways for you to understand how to expand your fretboard and get around a little bit easier. So what we're going to start with is I want to talk about how to imply chord changes. So I'm not going to be playing with a loop station or anything like that. I'm strictly going to be playing just solo guitar, and my hope is is that you'll be able to hear when those chord changes happen, like you did in the video that opened up, um, you know, uh, or the segment that opened up this video. So in that, I was playing in the key of B, but I was, you know, trying to imply when the chord change happened in the 12 bar progression, trying also to keep it. Um, I didn't use a metronome, but you know, I should have been, <laughs> but. Uh, what I was trying to do is like stay in a, in a deep pocket, you know, and be able to kind of play and enjoy, you know, improvising while also for the audience being able to um, let you know when that next chord was entering the groove, if that makes sense. So what we're going to talk about really fast is let's start with a triad. If we're in the key of A, our chords are going to be A. So one, four, five progression, A, D, and E are your main chord changes. A triad, very simply put, uh, you know, are three notes that make up a chord. So A, C sharp, and E, those are your three notes. And then we're adding in, you know, that G for that seventh. Very simple. What I want you guys to learn is when you switch that chord, what are the notes, what are the go-to notes that help imply that there is a new chord that has entered our world? The main one uh, that we're gonna talk about in this video is the third, the major third of each chord change. So let me give you an example. I'm gonna go between the one and the four chord first and I'll stop. One chord, four chord, back to the one chord. Let me do it one more time. Same thing, one chord, four chord, back to the one chord. It's not a super mind blowing uh, revelation, but for some players, something that you might overlook and not think about. Because uh, as a guitar player, sometimes we get into the point where we just want to play a bunch of fast notes. That is not, you know, a bad thing. I think there's a lot of uh, players out there that play a lot faster and cleaner than I do. 
and I'm wowed by that stuff. But for the you know, in terms of talking about feel and playing soulfully and you know engaging the listener so they don't have to guess what's going on, this is stuff that can be helpful. All right, so let me go. I'm gonna play. Um, that again. Now, what you might have noticed is that I was going down from that A to the F sharp, which is the third of the D chord. Okay, so that's what really brings out the quality of that chord itself. Same thing applies when we go to the E. So let me do it. I'm going to play through the changes and I'm going to go all the way through the five chord as well. Uh, two. Mm, two. simple as I possibly can right now just to make sure you're hearing those thirds come out and pop out of that chord. Now, what would it be like if we played different notes? What if I played the seven on that D? Let's try that. Let's see how the seven sounds compared to the, uh, the third. So the seven in the four chord is the C. So the C natural right here. Seven's not bad. Let's try the um, let's try the nine since we're on a D nine. Ready? One, two. as effective it's kind of a it's a weaker note to change on now here's the thing knowing this stuff and being able to apply it in terms of um, you know if you're blown over two choruses you know you can't be playing the same thing <laughs> every chord change you got to get creative with it in a way uh, but you know knowing that the the nine the seven the third are kind of all available to you Five doesn't really work when you change to the uh, to the four chord because it's the root. It's the root of the whole thing, and that's you don't want to just stay on A. You could. It's it's effective, so you could go like this. in a land right we want to be a little bit more creative with it and you might see that I'm pulling out some different notes um, there's a flat five all right so you you want to be able to have enough tricks in your bag to last and keep a solo interesting that's really what I'm getting at so let's play through the changes one more time. I'm gonna show you a couple little licks that you can start playing around with and I'll stop and slow them down after I do them, okay? So here's the first example when we go to that D chord. I'm gonna approach it from above and from below. So there's two options and you can get, you know, creative approaching it from above and from below. Chromaticism is pretty great. It's a great thing to have in your bag. You might hear old tapes of like Magic Sam when they switch chords doing something like that. Like so.
that's you know going back to like those players like i said like magic sam for instance like there's a listen i absolutely love listening to magic sam if you haven't listened to magic sam at all go back and listen to some of that stuff and then move forward till you get into the three kings and everything but the basis of all the blues and you know stuff that we know and love today all came from those cats that were creating all those um you know different chromaticism <laughs> And think about a lot of those cats that were playing those big jazz boxes back in the day. They weren't bending as much, so they had to figure out different ways, like. So there's a lot of different ways that you can approach getting to that core target note, I guess is what I'm trying to get at in a long-winded way. <laughs> so let's go through it one more time. When I get to the five chord, I'm going to show you something that I, I think is a really fun trick. Um, not trick, just a lick that I enjoy playing. Ready. Ba -bum. <laughs> So when you get to that E, we're on the root, right? We haven't talked about the root, okay? So when you get to that third, when that changes that four chord, you really feel that. And when you get to that five, a wonderful note to pull out is that one, so that E. So really powerful, strong on that, on that root note. So here we go, one more time. One, two, one. You get the idea. So this is just something that you can start working with. Um, obviously learning the, the five different positions of the pentatonic scale will help you get more comfortable getting to these notes. Um, you need to know if you're up here. Exactly the licks that you'd be playing down here or the same notes I would say that you're playing down here. You need to be able to play them in each different position so you can kind of connect ideas. That's the whole point. Um, you don't want to get to the point where you are connecting your ideas and understanding the fretboard as a whole. And this will get you there. Um, and knowing the notes, not just relying on muscle memory and patterns, but really understanding what the notes are of each individual chord. And once you do that, you can find them all over the fretboard. It's way more easy to get around. You don't feel like you're relying on crutches, but you really understand the fretboard at a deeper level. 
So triads will help you do that, learning triads all over the next, so like if you're playing A, you know, just kind of getting around on the fretboard and knowing where each of those specific notes are. Where's A, where's C sharp, where's E? On each individual string, each each fret up and down the, up and down the string, just learning where all those notes are. So that's the best way to really do this to kind of map out your fretboard, um, at least I've found. Um, that's kind of helped me tremendously over the past whatever 10 years that I've been playing is just really diving in and kind of figuring that stuff out. So I hope this is helpful. Um, just a short little 15 minutes of, of going through this stuff. If you have more questions and other things that you'd like me to see, like to see me cover regarding this, you know, I, I'm trying to do it as layman's terms as I possibly can without getting too theoretical. But I think if, um, if you really start shedding on this stuff, you start having a lot more fun on the instrument, which is what we're here to do and uh, it'll get you to pick it up and play it more often. So take care of yourself, take care of each other. I will see you next time. And uh, yeah, if you are new to this channel, thanks for stopping by. See you guys.